These are beef cheeks, and when cooked right, they are so freaking delicious and underrated, I suggest you all run out to the store right now and buy them. But are they good enough to be better than brisket? And can I improve on the best beef cheek recipe out there to make them even better? We're gonna find out in this video, so let's get smoking. I visited a top Texas barbecue restaurant in Austin last year called Leroy and & Lewis, and unfortunately they weren't serving brisket on the day I was there, so I tried out their beef cheeks instead, kind of not knowing what to expect, but I was absolutely blown away. Leroy and Lewis beef cheeks. That is so good. Really peppery, hey? It's peppery, but it's like a, yeah. you know, I don't want to be controversial, but this is like a better version of brisket almost. <laughs> that is something I never thought I'd be saying. I spent the last couple years of my life dedicated to brisket because I love it so much, but Honestly guys, this bite that I had at Leroy and Lewis of beef cheek was just absolutely amazing. So in this video, I'm recreating the Leroy and Lewis beef cheek recipe and I'm gonna confirm whether I still think it's better than brisket and because I want to see if I can make it even better, I'm going to try a variation of their recipe and sous vide the beef cheek after smoking it to see how it compares to the Leroy and Lewis method. But first things first, I need to know exactly how Leroy and Lewis cooks their beef cheeks, but luckily being the Prometheus of barbecue secrets that I am, I talked to Evan Leroy and he walked me exactly through how how he does his recipe so I can bring it to you and make the world a better place and also it's been on their YouTube channel for the past several months so I'm not really the first one to bring it to you guys but I'm hoping in this video I can add my own hot take to it and convince you guys to try out this beef cheek recipe because it's so amazing basically Evan smokes the beef cheeks for four hours at 250 to 275 degrees until they get to 165 degrees internal. He then puts them in a pan with beef tallow and they confit in the liquid tallow for four hours until tender. And finally, they get a long hold overnight in a 160 degree warming oven. I'm assuming overnight means around 12 to 15 hours until lunch service the next day. And that's basically the Leroy and Lewis method. And for the modified sous vide recipe, I'm going to smoke the beef cheeks for four hours to get some bark on them. And then I'm gonna put them in a sous vide bag with some beef tallow and clarified butter for around 18 to 20 hours at a very low temperature of 150 degrees Fahrenheit to see if they turn out any better. And I'm doing this for two reasons. The first reason is it could be a little bit easier to just smoke the beef cheeks for four hours and then chuck them in a sous vide bag. That removes a couple of steps. And the second reason is there is a possibility that by not taking the beef cheeks above around 165 degrees Fahrenheit and holding them at 150 for a very long period of time, we could preserve the muscle fibers and prevent them from drying out, but still get the same amount of collagen rendering because we're going at a low temperature for an extremely long period of time. But at the same time, by not taking them as high in temperature, we could have issues with not enough collagen rendering. So we'll just have to see what the results are in this video. But before we get to cooking, I'd like to thank Chef's Temp for sponsoring this video. I've been using the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 for over a year now, and it's definitely become the main thermometer I use Use on a daily basis. It's reliable, it's durable, and it's accurate for my everyday barbecuing and cooking needs, which is why I love it so much. In addition to its ultra fast and accurate temperature readings, it also has a fully rotatable probe design and a backlit display, so I can see what the temperature is even when it's pitch blackout, which a lot of the time it is when I'm smoking a brisket. It has a magnet on the back so I can stick it to the smoker or the fridge when I'm not using it, and it has a really cool hold feature that allows me to reach way back in the smoker, take a temperature read of the meat in the back and hit the hold button, then I can pull it out and I can clearly see what the temperature is, which is really cool. An IP67 waterproof rating means I can easily wash it off by submerging it in soapy water with no risk of shorting it out or wrecking it, which is important to me because my thermometers are always covered in grease and sauce at the end of the day, so I like how I can just dunk them in the water. I highly recommend the Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 and I've been using it long enough to confidently recommend it to you as a leading instant read option that's priced very low for the value it provides. So if you need an excellent instant read thermometer, click the link in the description section below and use code STBBQ20 to get 25% off your purchase for the entire holiday season. Again, that's code STBBQ25 for 25% off everything on the Chef's Temp website throughout the holidays.
Thanks again, Chef's Temp, for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get back to cooking. I'm starting with four trimmed beef cheeks. If your beef cheeks look different than this, just trim them down so they look like these. Cows spend most of their life just chewing constantly, so this hardworking muscle is packed with a spider web of tough collagen structures. And that's what makes it taste so good. When cooked right, that spider web of collagen in these cheeks is going to react with available water in a process known as hydrolysis. And it's going to soften and partially convert into gelatin, which basically turns these beef cheeks into delicious beef jello. I'm rubbing the cheeks with Smoke Trails BBQ Brisket Rub and going really heavy with the rub. This rub is designed with a bit less salt so it can go on super heavy for maximum bark and texture. So if you have a normal salt heavy rub, you'll want to go a lot lighter than I'm showing you here because it's a small cut of beef and you can easily over salt it. By the way, Smoke Trails Barbecue Brisket Rub is available in the description section below on Amazon to purchase. Now I'm lighting up my Oklahoma Joe's offset smoker with what I call the dirty star method. There's charcoal underneath and there's a star formation of small splits over top of it for maximum surface area. And as it burns down, it kind of looks like a dirty star and you get a variance of combustion temp. I'm just kidding guys. I just threw some splits in there and lit them on fire. This is not a method. Now after a quick scrape-a-doodle of the grates, I'm putting the beef cheeks on the far left side with a large water pan next to the firebox. They're going to smoke away at 250 to 275 degrees Fahrenheit for four hours until they hit roughly 165 to 175 degrees internal and they have a nice bark and the bark is set. Next, I'm placing two of them in a pan. These are the Leroy and Lewis style beef cheeks and I'm pouring in some liquid beef tallow until the liquid comes around halfway up the beef cheeks. By the way, I have a video on the best way to render beef tallow if you are wondering how to do that. And then I'm wrapping the top of the pan in plastic wrap to seal in the moisture and wrapping it again in aluminum foil so the plastic wrap doesn't melt. Again, all these steps are laid out in Evan's video on the Leroy and Lewis YouTube channel, so make sure to check out that video as well if you plan on making these, which you should. Again, go out to the store right now, get some beef cheeks, make these, they're so delicious. Now, for the sous vide beef cheeks, I spooned some beef tallow and clarified butter into a sous vide bag and sealed up the two cheeks with a vacuum sealer. Brad over at Chud's Barbecue also has a video where he sous vides beef cheeks, so make sure to check that out. I'll link it below. He goes to a higher temperature in the video, bagging them at 190 and then sous videing them at 170. 75 overnight. Well, in contrast, I'm going to sous vide these at a lower temperature of 150, but I'm going to leave them in for much longer than Brad did, around 18 to 20 hours, maybe even more, instead of just overnight. In retrospect, the higher temperature and shorter sous videing time that Brad used might actually be a better method because these are so collagen heavy and it needs that higher temperature to render the collagen. But you guys will see that for yourself in the taste test for this video. After another four hours, so eight hours total, the Leroy and Lewis beef cheeks are probing around 203 to 204 degrees internal and I'm able to press my finger in almost all the way without the meat bouncing back. That means these cheeks are done. And finally they're getting sealed back up in the same pan and put in the holding oven at 150 degrees overnight. Evan mentioned that he holds at 160 degrees overnight and I think you could probably even go as high as 175 if your oven doesn't go lower than that because there is so much collagen in these beef cheeks. We're basically cooking collagen here. So I'm not as worried about drying out the muscle fibers as I would be with a leaner cut of barbecue because all of that melted rendered collagen that's converting into gelatin is going to mask the dryness of the beef and it's going to make it taste absolutely amazing. So don't be afraid to hold it at a bit of a higher temperature. All right, guys, I've got the beef cheeks here that have been holding in the holding oven at 150 for approximately 12 to 14 hours. It is now noon the next day and they're looking really nice. Let's take one of them out of here. So you can see that the fat has filled up the pan a little bit more with the juices escaping from the beef cheeks. That's exactly what Evan said would happen in his video. And they look absolutely amazing. So I'm really, really excited to cut into this. It smells amazing. The aromas coming from these beef cheeks and the fat and the juices is just phenomenal. So I'm pumped about this. So in Evan's video, he says to find the longest edge and then cut them into, I think about three or four slices, pretty thick slices because they should be pretty well rendered. So I'll cut one, and I'll cut two, and then I'll give you guys a look. Woo! Wow! That looks crazy juicy. Oh my god. That looks good. Look at that, guys. That looks so good. Okay, I'm going to pull this apart. Just pulls apart so easily. Oh man, that looks good. Okay. I'm really excited for this because this looks absolutely phenomenal.
Oh my God. So when I was at Leroy and Lewis last year eating these, I said to my wife, this is better than brisket. And I think that I have confirmed that in this video. This tastes better than brisket to me. Oh my God. I never thought I'd be saying that about any cut of meat, but the extreme amount of rendered collagen and gelatin in here just creates this amazing, amazing experience. Mmm. Oh man, that is so good. It's perfectly rendered. It's getting that sticky consistency from the rendered collagen that has turned into gelatin. And you're getting a lot more surface area of bark than with a brisket because it's a kind of smaller piece. Oh man, yeah. Guys, it's better than brisket. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it, it's better than brisket. Look at all those juices coming out there and look at how rendered all of that collagen is. It just, oh my God, it's so good. And when you pull it apart, you can see the strands slowly coming apart and then they just break. Oh, it's like jelly. It's like beef jelly. Mm. Okay guys, so that was the best bite of barbecue I've had all year in 2023. So you guys gotta try this. What I'm really interested to see now is if the sous vide beef cheeks will be any better than this. I don't know how they could possibly, but we're gonna find out. All right guys, here are the sous vide beef cheeks and, I, and I'm really interested to see if they're going to be any better or worse than the other beef cheeks that I just tried because those were freaking amazing. So I'll just dump these out with all of the tallow and the butter. And it looks like they've lost a little bit of their darkness, but they're still pretty dark. The bark has adhered to the beef cheeks okay. So let's cut into these guys. And I'll give you a close up. So at first glance, it looks super juicy. It looks more like a steak than a brisket. And if I try to pull it apart, I mean, this is a really thick chunk, but if I pull it apart, it is a little bit tougher. It's actually a lot tougher than the last beef cheeks that I tried. But the real test is how does it taste? So let's give it a shot. It's still extremely good. It's extremely good and it is a little bit beefier than the last beef cheeks that I tried. I think the muscle fibers are a little bit less dried out, but the collagen, the interconnective tissue is not as well rendered as the first set of beef cheeks that we did. You can see as I try to pull it apart, we're not getting that sticky, ooey, gooey rendering. We're getting it a little bit, but not to the same extent as the other beef cheeks. I'll cut into this one, and maybe I'll do thinner slices because it's a little bit tougher. I'll give you guys a shot. It does look extremely juicy, and it is tender. And if I just tried this alone, I would say it's extremely good, but the first ones that I tried were way better. So based on this video, I would say that the original Leroy and Lewis method is better than sous vide it after the beef cheeks hit 165. So I would stick with the Leroy and Lewis method where you put them in the pan with the tallow and you can add some extra clarified butter that actually added to it, I think in this video. And then you cover the pan, you take them up to 203 degrees until they're super tender. So you can almost poke your finger through them and they're not bouncy at all. And then hold them for around 14 hours until lunch the next day. You could probably hold them until dinner time, to be honest. I think if you held them for 18 hours, they'd be absolutely fine. And if you don't have a holding oven or a reliable way to hold barbecue, then you could probably just use your sous vide machine after they hit 203 and they're probe tender, take the beef cheeks off the smoker, out of the pan, put them in a sous vide bag with the beef tallow, and then hold them at 150 for 14 to 18 hours. And I think they would turn out pretty much identical to the first ones that I tried in this video. And when beef cheeks are done right, like the first ones that I tried in this video using the Leroy and Lewis method almost exactly, I still stand by my claim that I would prefer that bite of barbecue, the beef cheeks done in that specific way over brisket any day of the week. It was absolutely amazing. And I think that beef cheeks done that way are better than brisket. Now, is it because I eat a ton of brisket every week and I'm doing all these brisket videos and I'm just sick of brisket now? I don't think so. I still love brisket and I like the fat cap rendering, that caramely fat that you get on top of each slice. 
I love the point slices on a perfectly cooked brisket with the fully rendered fat cap, the perfect bark, crispy bark, super juicy intramuscular marbling rendering on the interior and the exterior of the meat with all the fat. That can be absolutely magical, but this is something else. This is like eating beef jelly and the flavor experience is just absolutely amazing. It's unlike anything I've ever tried before. It's like brisket, but it's elevated. And I think that's because of the extreme amount of collagen in the beef cheeks. Once it's perfectly rendered, it just gets ooey gooey sticky and it's absolutely amazing. So thanks so much for watching guys. If you have any ideas for future smoke trails experiments or video ideas that you want to see, let me know in the comment section below. I will see you in the next video and until then, happy smoking.